In the state of Missouri, landlords may find that most counties more or less follow the same eviction process. Fill out the forms, serve the tenant, attend the trial, and wait for judgment. Alternatively, a landlord can also ask for legal advice from an attorney for more information on the rules for evicting a tenant, which we highly recommend to ensure the process goes smoothly. So let's dive further. Common reasons for eviction. Failure to pay rent or non-payment of rent. The most common reason for eviction is non-payment of rent. A landlord can evict a tenant for failing to pay rent on time. Rent is considered late in Missouri a day past its due. However, a grace period to extend payment of timely rent may be available if the landlord and tenant were able to include a stipulation in their lease or rental agreement about extension of rent. Landlords can technically file an eviction when the tenant is even a day late or a dollar short. However, most eviction attorneys recommend waiting until the tenant is at least two weeks delinquent before initiating the eviction process. In a case about failure to pay rent, the landlord is not required to give the tenant any prior written notice before filing for eviction for non-payment of rent. The landlord may give the tenant some notice, but they are not required to do so. Violation of the lease or rental agreement. A lease agreement can vary from tenant to tenant. It contains the responsibilities of each party during the entire duration of the tenant's stay. A tenant may face eviction for violating the terms of the lease. Landlords and tenants are required to uphold the terms of the lease agreement at all times. The landlord can evict the tenant for violating any of the terms stipulated in the lease. In a Missouri eviction, this is called an unlawful detainer case. The landlord must provide the tenant with a 10-day notice to quit that informs the tenant of their violation and that they are about to be evicted. The notice gives the tenant 10 days to vacate the unit. The landlord may allow the tenant time to cure the violation, but they are not required by Missouri law to do so. There is no specific notice period for this type of eviction because it will depend on what was indicated in the lease, if anything. Lease violations in Missouri eviction include damage to the rental unit, smoking in non-smoking areas, too many people are living inside the unit, housing a pet in a pet-free rental unit or rental property, the landlord may begin filing an eviction if the tenant remains inside the rental unit after the given posted period. For your own Missouri lease agreement, be sure to visit Doorloop's form page to download a template along with many other forms, which will be linked in the description below. Conducting illegal activity. If a tenant has engaged in a legal activity in the state of Missouri, the landlord is required to give them a written 10 days notice to quit. This provides the tenant with 10 days to move out of the rental property before the landlord can file an eviction lawsuit. Examples of illegal activity include, but are not limited to, prostitution, illegal gaming, involvement in the creation, distribution, or consumption of a controlled substance. The landlord can begin filing for an eviction if the tenant remains on the property after 10 days. However, if the illegal activity falls under the following, no notice is required. Violence or assault against other tenants or the landlord, property damage worth more than 12 months rent, criminal activity that is drug related, if a tenant is not the one who commits any drug related criminal activities, excessive property damage and violence, but perhaps a guest or co-resident, then the tenant receives a notice of at least five days. Non-renewal of lease after the end of the rental period. An eviction in Missouri does not allow a landlord to evict a tenant without a good cause. As long as the tenant does not violate any rules, they can stay until their rental period ends. However, if the tenant becomes a holdover tenant, the eviction process may begin after the appropriate grace period. A holdover tenant is someone who overstays their lease term without applying for renewal. A landlord can evict a tenant who stays in the property even a day after their written lease ends. The eviction process in Missouri calls this an unlawful detainer case. Filing a complaint. The next step is filing a legal complaint in the correct circuit court based on the rental properties county. A landlord must file a complaint only after the notice period has passed. Successful evictions rely on accurate filing, so the landlord must file all the forms correctly. Steps in filing. Proceed to the circuit court the rental property belongs to, fill out the forms, and pay the filing cost. Timeline. It takes about 30 to 60 days before a landlord can start filing an eviction. If the case is about failure to pay rent, then they have to wait one month before they can start filing an eviction lawsuit. Notice to comply. Before filing for an eviction with the court, you need to issue the tenant a notice to comply. Serving the tenant. 
The next step in eviction process is serving the summons and complaint to the tenant. The landlord must not serve the documents by themselves. The summons is a court order that instructs the tenant to be available for a court hearing. It, along with its supporting documents, must contain the information, such as the date and time of the court trial. Missouri only allows the sheriff or a process server appointed by the court to serve these documents. They must be delivered at least four days before the date of the court hearing. How to serve documents to a tenant. Personal service, substituted service, posting service, and mailing service. After serving the summons and complaint. The tenant is not required to file an answer in response to the court order. They only have to show up to the eviction hearing. Timeline. The documents must be served at least four days before the date of the court hearing. Asking for possession. Filing a motion to obtain judgment and get a judgment for possession. To win and accomplish this step, landlords must provide a strong argument backed up by solid evidence against their tenants. Should the tenant fail to show up to the hearing, the landlords may win by default. The tenant may appeal the judgment within 10 days from when the court issued the judgment for possession. They can request for a new trial or ask the court to set aside their judgment. Next procedure if the tenant disagreed and filed an answer. Filing an answer is not necessary for an eviction hearing to be held or scheduled. The court trial must continue and come to order either way. Should the tenant be unable to attend the hearing, the judge may issue a default judgment in favor of the landlord. This means the tenant must move out of the rental unit. However, if both parties are present, the landlord must support their claim with evidence and show it to the judge. This includes, but is not limited to the following, copy of the deed and the lease or rent agreement, rent receipts, rent ledgers, bank statements, witness statements, photo and video documentation of the violations committed by the tenant. Timeline. A hearing for an eviction action must be held within 15 to 21 days depending on the reason for eviction. The tenant can appeal for reconsideration within 10 days from the time judgment is passed. Getting possession. After the landlord wins the case and gets a writ of possession. Once the landlord wins the cases and provided the tenant does not appeal for file for an appeal or reconsideration, the court will issue a writ of possession 10 days after the court rules in the landlord's favor. The writ of possession is a court order that informs the tenant that the tenant must move out of their housing of the premises or else they will be forcibly evicted. If the tenant fails to do so, law enforcement officials can remove them from the premises. Move out process. The final step in the eviction process is to move the tenant out of their housing on the premises. Before this can officially happen, the writ of possession first has to be delivered to the law enforcement officials within two business days from the date the court issued judgment in favor of the landlord. Once they are delivered to the law enforcement officials, they have to act on the writ of possession within 24 hours if the eviction involved illegal activity. For all other types of evictions, such as failure to pay rent, they have to act on the writ within 15 days from the date the judgment was passed in favor of the landlord. Counting the 10 days before the writ of possession is issued and the maximum of two days for the writ to be given to the law enforcement officials, the tenant has about three days as the minimum amount of time to vacate the premises, unless their eviction was about illegal activity. Only the appropriate authorities are allowed to remove the tenant by force. Even if the landlord wins the case, they cannot engage in illegal methods of eviction. Sometimes a tenant can leave behind personal property after a forced eviction. The tenant's personal property cannot be sold or disposed of for 10 days. Should the tenant fail to respond to the landlord's written messages by the end of the 10 days, then the landlord may dispose of the property. Timeline. A tenant has 24 hours to five days to leave the rental premises from the moment the rent of recovery is delivered. This depends on how long it takes for the writ to be delivered to the law enforcement officers. A tenant has 10 days to reclaim any personal property left behind. Missouri eviction timeline. So it takes an average of one month to three months for a complete eviction process in Missouri. Showing evidence. Eviction hearings are scheduled in court depending on the reason for eviction. Court hearings about unlawful detainer or non-payment of rent must be held within the 21 days from the date the court issued the summons and complaint. Meanwhile, court evictions related to illegal activity must be held within 15 days from the date the court issued the summons and complaint. How to keep good records. 
If the tenant disagrees with the request to bring an eviction process and they reply to the court, it's important that you keep extremely good records of everything so you can provide proof to the judge and win your case. This part can make or break your entire eviction request in the event of a dispute. You can stay organized by keeping a physical paper trail, scanning documents, backups, and property management software. Evidence to show for not paying rent. If the tenant doesn't pay rent and they dispute that claim, it's important that you show the judge the following. Your lease agreement, all payments, all payment returns, and all messages. Evidence to show for lease violations. If you are evicting the tenant for lease violations, for example, noise complaints, unauthorized pets, or property damages, it's important to show proof from any of the following methods. Security cameras, photo and videos, and the lease terms. And that's a wrap for today's video on the Missouri eviction process. We hope you found this video informative and insightful, but hold on, there's still more to uncover about the Missouri process of eviction. If you want to explore this topic further, we have got you covered. In the description below, you will find a link to a detailed blog post that dives deep into the eviction process in Missouri. It covers everything from notice requirements and legal proceedings to tenant rights and landlord responsibilities. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Take care and we'll see you in the next one one.